Hi, I'm Stuart White. I'm the Director of the Institute for Sustainable Futures at the University of Technology, Sydney. Thanks for the opportunity to make a few comments and summarise some points regarding the need for the Danoon Dam uh, in the north coast of New South Wales. Um, I've been working in integrated supply demand planning for all mainland states and territories for water utilities and government agencies for about 30 years and uh, um, I've also lived in Lismore and uh, worked for Rouse County Council at various points as a consultant. I wanted to make four points in relation to the need for the Danoon Dam. The first is that the restriction rules or the level of service have been changed without any engagement of the community. This has had about a 700 to 1100 megalitre per year impact on the secure yield of the Rocky Creek system. So what this means is that there has not been an opportunity for citizens to have a say in the tightening of these restriction requirements and the trade-off with several hundred million dollars worth of expenditure. So it's very important that there be a robust, appropriate community engagement process to determine what the level of service should be because this has actually brought forward the need for the dam on paper uh, by uh, probably a decade or more. The second issue relates to the financial risk associated with this investment and the unit cost of water. The unit cost or the marginal cost of water has not been calculated correctly or transparently. Let's take an example. If you were a business person setting up a soft drink factory and you spent $200 million in present value terms on a factory that made soft drink bottles and you sold you, uh, 20 million of those bottles uh, per year, then because of the present value over uh, 10 years or so, you would be looking at about a dollar per bottle. However, if the sales are only $2 million per year, then you'll be looking at $10 a bottle. And that's analogous to the situation that Rouse County Council is in, with a very risky, large capital cost, a large upfront expenditure, and the water that will actually be used from this dam is much, much lower than uh, the capacity or yield of the dam. So we need to do those calculations in the appropriate, accurate and transparent way in order to understand what the real cost of water from the dam is and therefore to compare it uh, fairly with the other options. In the process of planning for this, for the Danoon Dam, there's been no consideration of contingency or so-called real options. This is best practice in the utility industry now, is to look at options that you don't have to build but you can prepare to build if you need to. And the risk associated with climate change is such that the Danoon Dam will not be able to provide water during the worst possible drought. So there needs to be other options which are less rainfall dependent and particularly which can be rolled out rapidly, planned for, if indeed uh, possibly needed, contracted, designed and ready to roll out. And this can apply to groundwater, it can apply to potable reuse, it can apply to intercatchment transfers, uh, it can apply to a whole range of different options that are smaller and can be built uh, as and when they are needed during the worst possible drought on record. The fourth issue is that even though the Rouse region has been a leader in terms of implementing water efficiency options early, uh, it has not invested optimally. There is significant potential for investment in water efficiency options, by that we mean reducing system leakage, improving the efficiency of appliances in, and fixtures, actually investing in changing the stock of appliances and fixtures in shops, offices, factories, houses, in order to make sure that the region is best practice efficiency. These are much, much lower costs. It's the quickest, cheapest and fastest and largest way to provide new water. Similarly with non-potable reuse, there's not been sufficient activity, sufficient investigation of the potential costs and benefits associated with implementing non-potable reuse, particularly uh, industrial scale, commercial buildings and the like. So there's huge opportunities and it could actually make the Northern Rivers region uh, world leading in terms of water efficiency, increasing employment, increasing uh, services, increasing trades, making up for a downturn in uh, 
housing construction. So there are huge op economic opportunities uh, as well as significant greenhouse gas reduction savings to be made through implementing water efficiency and non-potable reuse. In conclusion, there are a lot of risks associated with uh, the investment, the uh, capital cost, the high upfront capital cost associated with the Danoon Dam, uh, the level of service issues, uh, the fact that the unit cost has not been correctly or transparently calculated, the fact that contingency options or real options uh, approach has not been even considered, let alone applied, uh, and the fact that there is significant increased potential for water efficiency, improving the efficiency with which water is used in the area, reducing leakage right across the region uh, in a whole of region approach as distinct from individual constituent councils doing their own thing. Uh, and there are significant opportunities for exploring further use of non-potable reuse. For all of these reasons, uh, there are significant opportunities from an alternate path, and there are significant risks associated with such a large-scale investment in a supply option.